Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA results of three Tarim mummies. On this channel I have already covered two Tarim mummies. When I make these videos I make sure to select the mummies of pure hunter-gatherer ancestry without in the European admixture. These are Bronze Age mummies and it is fascinating how they managed to remain so pure and hunter-gatherer at that point in history. Eventually I'll cover the mummies with the Indo-European contamination too, but I just want to do these first. Now, let's get into the results of the first mummy, who is a woman. This is her predicted phenotype with my Nashakot tool. Nashakot predicts her to have brown eyes, snub-shaped nose and black hair. Uh, YSEC actually did not even give her a prediction for eye color. It was kind of a low quality file, right? So there wasn't much to go off of here. They, she was not genotyped for the main BH2 mutation, so that's why YSEC did not give her an eye color prediction. She uh, most likely had BH1 and definitely does not have BH4. Um, she likely had darker skin and other traits based on her genotype in Keto G and SLC45A2. And based on her genotype in Tirp1 and Tir, she definitely had darker eyes and hair. Now, in one of the variants of DRD2, she had a genotype that sort of protects her against nicotine addiction, which is pretty cool, and lower odds of psychosis with ACT1. Moving on to polygenic traits, she had a low risk score for Crohn's disease, she had an average risk score for type 2 diabetes, she had an average risk score for uh, Parkinson's disease, she had a low risk score for schizophrenia, uh, she had a very low risk score for coronary heart disease, and she had a very low risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Um, you can see she's scoring some South Asian, that's because Eastern hunter-gatherers and ancient North Eurasians actually had some really strong affinities to South Asia. She is closest to MA1 here, which is an ancient North Eurasian, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of ancient North Eurasian plus some kind of Native American. Uh, this is her result with ancient Eurasia K6. By the way, this is a Bronze Age, this is literally a Bronze Age individual, but she resembles Ice Age Central Asians the most, despite being a Bronze Age individual. That's why uh, it's a very fascinating sample, and all of these samples are like this. All the, all the other samples are scoring similar to this too, a mixture of Eastern Hunter Gatherer plus some kind of Southeast Asian. This is what she scores with MDLPK23B. She's basically scoring like a typical ancient North Eurasian would score uh, with this calculator. And with the Oracle, she's closest to Sami, followed by Udmurza, but there is also Native American groups here. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Native American plus Mansi or Hunt, and Mansi and Hunt are in Western Siberia. Uh, with G25, the official G25 for this sample is also closest to various Native Americans, followed by Udmurts, followed by Mansi. And in terms of the deeper components, this is what she is. Mostly Easter hunter-gatherer plus some kind of uh, East Eurasian admixture. Pretty much the same as what we've seen with Gidrosia uh, K6. And uh, she can also be modeled as a mixture of Tumian hunter-gatherer. She's very similar to Tumian hunter-gatherer, which is kind of a West, West Siberian hunter-gatherer cluster. Similar to Easter hunter-gatherers but a little bit more affinities towards East Asians. Now let's move on to the second individual who is a man. Uh, unlike the previous sample, this sample was genotyped for pretty much every variation that my Nashakot looks for to determine uh, phenotype. He is predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub-shaped nose and black hair. <coughs> he did not even have BH1, he did not have blue eye haplotype 1, which means obviously cannot have BH2 or 3 or 4 without BH1. So definitely had very dark eye color, and um, Snipper Free predicts him to have brown eyes, black hair, and intermediate skin. What's interesting about him is that he had two derived EDAR, so definitely had East Asian facial traits. This is why I depicted him here with East Asian facial features. And what's interesting about him is that he actually had, uh, you can see on the bottom right here, in the Keto G variation, he had the blonde A and E mutation, the blonde ancient North Eurasian mutation. But, you know, it's, a, it's interesting that he had this mutation, but it doesn't actually contribute much to hair color. He's still predicted to have black hair. With both H. irisplex and Nashakot, which actually take this mutation into account, he's still predicted to have black hair. So, this mutation is just not particularly important. People will look at this and say, well, uh, they must be blonde. Ancient North Eurasians must be the origin of blonde, blonde or whatever. No, this is just, it's a very insignificant mutation. It doesn't play a big role in hair color. Now, according to his genotype in this variation of DRD2, he was prone to alcoholism, which is interesting. Uh, he also had the A1-A2 genotype in TAC1, which is also kind of, kind of atypical for a modern human. Like, humans tend to be A2-A2 here, so he probably had slightly higher risk of ADHD than modern humans do. And um, 
when it comes to the combs val met variation or the warrior gene he was he had the warrior with the ie genotype which means advantage in memory and attention tasks disadvantage in stress resiliency this is a very typical genotype for a european and pretty atypical for everybody outside of europe and here i'm showing you that indeed he had east asian edar east asian facial traits he had uh, he was homozygous for it actually which is very typical for like koreans and uh, with act one he had a genotype that reduces the risk of psychosis from cannabis from smoking cannabis which is pretty cool and with oxtr he definitely did, did not have derived oxtr did not have the sociopath gene uh, probably was very empathetic and optimistic and when it comes to lactose persistence he did not have the european lactose persistence mutation which means was most likely lactose intolerant um, and he actually had the european mutation that decreases the risk of myopia which is pretty cool probably would not need glasses to see in a distance now when it comes to polygenic traits and illnesses he had a pretty high risk score for crohn's disease uh, he had a pretty high risk score for coronary heart disease uh, he also had a high risk score for type 2 diabetes uh, he had a pretty high risk score for parkinson's disease um, he had a high risk score for bipolar disorder he had a pretty high risk score for brain aneurysm he had a low risk score finally something low for schizophrenia and he had an average risk score for asthma now this is his gd match results with eurogenes k13 once again we can see the south asian affinity this person does not have any asi right but because it's so heavily ancient north eurasian it's got south asian affinities right and it's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, malta one which is an ancient north eurasian plus west greenlander or native american and um, this is what he scores with ancient eurasia k6 once again a very uh, very hunter gatherer kind of result um, it's closest to Borusho, which are I think people in Pakistan, but it's very, very high distance and but with a low distance You can model him as a mixture of Eastern hunter-gatherer plus various Southeast Asians with a low distance So he is kind of a mixture of Eastern hunter-gatherers and something from the Asia This is what he scores with MDLP K23B as you can see mostly ancestral altaic very is very um, similar result to the previous sample All the samples I'm going to show you in this video have very similar GD match results, right? He's closest to once again the same populations as her and he's actually also getting modeled as a mixture of Ojibwa Which is Native American plus Mansi also a mixture of Native American and West Siberian with the Oracle here um, With the G25 we see the same results as with the previous female kind of a mixture of Native American and West Siberian and um, in terms of the deeper components it's closest to Tumane hunter-gatherer and it's a mixture of Tumane hunter-gatherer plus something from more uh, from Asia or a mixture of Karelian hunter-gatherer, Eastern hunter-gatherer plus something from Asia which is basically what Tumane hunter-gatherer is. Now let's move on to the third and final individual for this video which is also a man. Uh, this is what he looked like. He's predicted to have brown eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair. With snipper free he's also predicted to have brown eyes black hair and actually white skin he, snipper free predicts him to have white skin which is interesting uh, he based on his genotype in keto g and slc 45a2 he probably had darker skin tone and uh, he was heterozygous for edar so might have had partially east asian facial traits he had bh1 blue eye haplotype 1 but no bh4 and no bh2 so probably had very dark eyes indeed he was heterozygous for the Proferdensin Pro variant of DRD2, which means intermediate risk of schizophrenia, intermediate likelihood of being a no-go learner. And he actually had the A1, A2 genotype in TAC1, which is also kind of atypical for a modern human. Uh, probably higher odds of ADHD and Parkinson's than what's typical for modern humans. According to his genotype at this variation of ACT1, he had lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, so he can probably smoke weed without repercussions, and he was heterozygous for Combs Valmet variation, which means intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain. Um, now, he wasn't genotyped for the main variation in OXTR that I look for, but based on his genotype in this variation, he probably had the um, sociopath gene. Now this is me just showing you that he was indeed heterozygous for EDAR, so slightly East Asian facial traits, some East Asian facial traits. And um, he did have the European mutation that protects against myopia, which is really cool, probably had better eyesight. And um, he did not have the European mutation for lactose persistence, most likely was lactose intolerant. Now moving on to polygenic traits, he had a very high risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, pretty high risk score for schizophrenia too. Um, a very high risk score for Parkinson's as well and a um, pretty high risk score for coronary heart disease as well an average risk score for bipolar disorder um, 
a low risk score for type 1 diabetes, a average risk score for brain aneurysm, and an average risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. It's a very typical result for any kind of Tarim mummy. Not maybe not exactly a typical result for ancient North Eurasian, but it's also close to ancient North Eurasian. As you can see, it's closest to ancient North Eurasian, closer than to any other population. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of ancient North Eurasian plus uh, Greenlander, which is kind of interesting. And with ancient Eurasia K6. This is what he scores. Once again, a very typical result for a Tarim mummy without Indo-European admixture. There is no, there is no Indo-European admixture here, right? Even though it's closest to step IA, the distance to step IA is very, uh, very distant, right? It's not very similar. And uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K23B. Also, kind of a similar result, mostly ancestral Altaic here. There is some Amerindian, South Central Asian as well. Typical result for any kind of hunter-gatherer from Central Asia, right? And he's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Ojibwa, which is Native American, plus Mansi, similar to the previous samples too. Uh, the G25 for this sample is also the same as the other, uh, the other two samples, pretty much the same uh, populations that it's closest to the same distances even. And um, in terms of the deeper components, this is the mixture that created this mummy, right? It's a mixture of uh, two main hunter-gatherer, Siberian hunter-gatherer, plus some kind of additional East Eurasian admixture. Thank you guys for watching my video until the end. Uh, you can actually download the raw data files for all three of these samples from link which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.